Hello students. In this video, we will try to learn the concept of application of crystal field splitting. That is, uh, we can calculate number of unpaired electrons. With this, we can calculate spin moment, magnetic moment. We can decide shape we can decide magnetic property etc but before that before uh, going for the calculation of uh, uh, one more thing what we can do is we can calculate crystal field splitting energy that means with this crystal field splitting concept we can calculate number of unpaired electrons we can decide paramagnetic property we can decide uh, shape of the compound we can decide whether it is inner or outer complex and also we can calculate crystal field splitting energy or stabilization energy. Before we go for that, some basic rules are there. Let us discuss those. First of all, if the complex is given, if the complex is given, then check out the atomic number of the metal atom or metal ion. Then look at the electronic configuration, then find the oxidation state, then based on these two we will get to know d electrons. Once we know the d electrons, Then you look at the coordination number. Coordination number will help us to know whether it is tetrahedral complex or octahedral complex. Are you getting students? Just look at this. <coughs> first, I didn't, uh, get the complex. First, look at the complex. Identify the atomic number of the central metal atom of the ion. Then what you have to do? Write the electronic configuration. Then calculate the oxidation state, that is primary valency. And then based on that, you will get to know number of d electrons. Once you know the number of d electrons, look at the coordination number. The coordination number will help us to know tetrahedral or octahedral nature of the complex. If coordination number is 4, then it will be tetrahedral. And if coordination number is 6, it will be octahedral. Okay, with respect to, let's go for octahedral complexes. If it is octahedral complex, then just look at whether it is, whether the uh, ligand participating is strong ligand or weak ligand. If it is strong ligand, just look at the d electrons. Look at the d electrons. If strong ligand, if d electrons, these d electrons can be either odd or they can be even. I repeat, the d electrons can be either odd or even. If they are odd, then spin only magnetic moment because of the strong field ligand will be corresponding to only one electron and its value will be 1.732 dm. It is always, I repeat, once you know the d electrons, look at the coordination number, if it is octahedral, then come to this, if it is octahedral, look at the type of the ligand, whether it is strong ligand or weak ligand. If it is strong ligand and if d electrons are odd, then always magnetic moment corresponds to only one electron, remember this. And if it is, if the d electrons are even in number, then number of unpaired electrons will be always equal to zero. Therefore, mu s, the spin only magnetic moment is 0, 0.0 bm. In such case, the substance will be, the complex will be diamagnetic. In this case, the complex will be paramagnetic. Got students? First, identify the complex. Uh, first, look at the complex identify the central metal atoms, atomic number, 
then find write its electronic configuration then what then find the oxidation state then oxidation state will tell you how many d electrons are present just look at the ordination number that will help you to know whether the complex is octahedral or tetrahedral once it is octahedral geometry is known just look at strong or weak ligand if it is strong ligand two cases are possible look at this if strong ligands two cases are possible either the electrons will be the electrons will be either odd in number or even in number if it's odd definitely mag magnetic moment will be corresponding to only one electron and if it is even in number then it is diamagnetic in nature is it clear strong ligand then only two cases either paramagnetic with respect to one electron or diamagnetic is it clear uh -huh. and if it is a weak ligand if it is weak ligand, just look at this. Uh, if B has more than five electrons, if D has more than five electrons, see here, it is a weak ligand, then there is no question of forced pairing. There is a question of forced pairing. If it is a weak ligand, then if D electrons are more than five, that is 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. If it is it's here, if D has 5 electrons, number of unpaired electrons will be, number of unpaired electrons will be 5 only. And it is, if it is 6, number of unpaired electrons will be decreasing because one electron will go to, uh, it will not go to, see here. If D electrons, if, if D electrons are 5 in number, then number of unpaired electrons will be corresponding to 5 only. If it is 6, 7, 8 like that, see here, number of unpaired electrons will be decreasing. If it is 6, number of unpaired electrons will be 4. If it is 7, number of unpaired electrons will be 3. If it is 8, it will be 2. If it is 9, it will be 1. And if it is 10, it will be 0. Look at this. If D has, suppose, 7 electrons, how many extra to 5? 2. That means 2 electrons will be going for pairing with already 5 electrons. So out of 5, 2 are paired. How many electrons are remaining? 3 unpaired electrons. Look at this. If D electrons are 6, how many extra to 5? 1. That means out of 5, 1 electron will be paired. That means how many electrons will be left unpaired? 4. Look at this. 6. One unpaired electron, one pair, uh, electron will be going for pairing, then four will be left remaining unpaired. If you remember this, it will be easy for us to calculate it. Okay, look at this once again. If you know the d electron, just look at the coordination number, you will get to know the geometry. Once you know the geometry, check whether the ligand is strong or weak. I have already discussed about how to find out the whether the ligand is strong or weak in the previous videos. If you want to know that, you please refer to the earlier videos also. Okay. Now, if it is instead of octahedral, if it is tetrahedral structure, then just look at whether the participating ligands are strong ligand or weak ligand. Then you follow the same. Is it clear? If it is strong ligand, the same concept is applicable. If it is weak ligand also, the same concept is applicable. Let us go for taking some examples here. Okay, let us go for first example. It is NiCl2 minus. Okay. Remember students, the charge on the complex will be giving you the hint regarding the oxidation state of the metal atom of the ion. Just reverse the charge sign. For example, what is the oxidation state of nickel? Just look at the charge on the complex. It is minus 2. Change the sign. That will be the oxidation state of nickel. It is plus 2. Just verify. It is 28. Atomic number of nickel is how much? 20. 
8. Okay. And it will be 4 S 2 3 D 8. Rotation. Okay. What is the oxidation? Let's see here. It is X minus 4 is equal to minus 2. Therefore, X is equal to plus 2. Take another example. Uh, you take this example, Fe. Fe Cn 6 times raised to 3 minus. Okay. To find the oxidation rate of Fe, how much it is? What is the charge on the complex I am? 3 minus. Just change the sign from minus to plus. It will be oxidation rate. Look at this. Oxidation rate of Fe here is, it should be plus 3. Look at this. Atomic number of Fe is 26. That means it is uh, 20. That is 4s to 3d6. Okay. Look at this. <coughs> Let x be the oxidation state of Fe. Then minus 1 into 6 minus 6 is equal to minus 3. Therefore, x is equal to plus 3. Is it clear? To find the oxidation state, what you have to do? Just look at the charge on the complex ion. What you have to do next? Change this sign. That will be the oxidation state. Except one case. Just look at this. FeCN6, 4 minus. FeCN6, 4 minus. Well, according to the trick, oxidation state of Fe in this complex ion should be plus 4. It is not plus 4. It cannot be plus 4. Because look at this one. <coughs> It is F is 3D 6 and 4S 2. That means here let X be the opposite instead of F. Then X minus 6 is equal to minus 4. Therefore, X is equal to how much? It is plus 2. Therefore, excluding this complex, most of the time, 99% of the time, charge on the complex ion will be the oxidation state of the central metal atom of the ion if sign is inversed. That means just look at the charge on the complex ion, inverse the sign, that will be the oxidation state of the metal atom of the ion present in the complex. Okay. <coughs> now, let us use this complex. Uh, let us write the crystal field electronic configuration for this. Its atomic number is 28, out cell electronic configuration is 3D84S2. Then the ligand is weak ligand, that means forced pairing does not, forced pairing does not occur. That means it will be, see here, coordination number is 4. Coordination number is 4 means either the structure can be <coughs> tetrahedral or Square planar. It's a weak ligand, therefore, force pairing does not take place, and hence the structure must be so structure must be sp3 thing, tetrahedral. That means it should be sp3 hydrolyzed only. It is sp3 hydrolyzed. Okay. Uh, tetrahedral means 3 will be above, 2 will be below. This is Eg, these two are P2, G. Okay. The participating ligands are weak ligand. That means, uh, how many electrons are left out? In this case, D has 8 electrons. Because out of 4, 3D8 and 4S2, 2 electrons are lost. D electrons remaining are 8. Ligands are weak. Force pairing does not occur. That means let the fill the, these electrons into these orbitals. See here. 1, 2. Force pairing does not occur. Then the remaining electrons. How many electrons are left out? 6. They will enter into next level. 3, 4, 5. All orbitals are filled in. The next. How many electrons are left out? 3. That is. 1, 2, and one more electron is here. So, how many number of unfit electrons are left out? Before that, you know, write, write the electronic configuration. It is Eg, 4, P2G. 
also 4. Is e 4 and it goes in. It also 4. Okay. Number of unpaid electrons are n is equal to 2. Therefore, mu s is square root of 2 of 2 plus 2. This is square root of 8. That means 2 point roughly 2.82.